everyone, so just thought I'd do a double episode review again, uh, this is for episode 45 and 46, uh, obviously I need to catch up a bit on my reviews as well because uh, now at this point episode 48 is out, so with episode 45 and 46 I thought they actually went well as a pair as well for a review, so um, it's very interesting indeed, uh, both these episodes definitely link up to each other and it really just uh, shows off the differences between both a Psyqualia zombie and someone who's been deleted from Vanguard. So, uh, starting off with obviously episode 45, we have uh, Ibuki uh, going up against Kai. Now, I did already have the feeling that Ibuki was going to win this because uh, Ibuki just seemed too significant to actually lose so soon, even if it was to someone as strong as Kai. I just couldn't see Ibuki losing here though, I will have to admit that uh, at least two of the turns where Kai rode into grade 3s, he did seem like he was about to win, uh, but unfortunately Ibuki does have the power of Sequalia himself, so um, as a result Ibuki ended up winning. Uh, so it's a shame to see that Kai lost, however, uh, really amazing to see that Kai's connection was so strong to the point where even after he lost, he was actually capable of saying that uh, Vanguard was fun uh, right in front of um, Ibuki, so that's definitely really amazing. Obviously that happened right before he collapsed, um, and once that happened, uh, he pretty much just uh, lost that whole wheel to fight, uh, which continued on to episode 46 of course, but uh, still continuing on with uh, 45, um, we could also see that uh, Ibuki is now having uh, certain types of doubts as well throughout the fight. We could already see that Ibuki is having a bit of trouble as well, um, kind of reminiscing and uh, having thoughts of fun as uh, Kai say. I mean, right now he's in this kind of denial and he's also questioning uh, what he's able to do right now as well because at this point he even feels that he's uh, falling into the hands of um, Takudo here or rather Concert Master. So we almost forgot that Ibuki actually did beat Takudo uh, when he first met him and allowed Concert Master to take over. So right now I'm definitely interested to see if uh, Ibuki actually ever takes on Takudo himself. Uh, perhaps that will happen because at this point, just as Ren predicted in the previous episode of 44, uh, it is the worst case scenario at this point because we pretty much have Ibuki, Kai, uh, sorry not Kai, Ibuki, Aichi and Takudo all on the uh, bad guys team. Whereas for the good guys side, Kai just lost. So all we really have here is uh, Ren. Uh, you could also argue that maybe Misaki is also part of it as well, but at this point, um, I really doubt it. Uh, Misaki and Naoki, I don't think they'll be as uh, pivotal in this particular point. Um, it's mostly going to be Ren here uh, that really has to carry things. So at this point, what I'm kind of predicting is that uh, perhaps uh, Ren will take on Aichi and bring him back, and maybe Takudo will take on uh, Ibuki, and I have a feeling that Ibuki might actually end up losing against Takudo, or rather against the Concert Master. Um, we have this whole fairness of fighting where if one, if two particular fighters uh, fight twice throughout the anime, um, if one fighter lost in their first fight, then they'll most likely win in the second fight. Uh, that's just something that I kind of see there. So, Ren actually lost his to Aichi in his first fight. So, uh, without a doubt, I could actually assume that maybe Ren will beat Aichi in this case and actually free him from Psyqualia. And then Aichi will be able to uh, take on Takudo, which I believe will already have defeated uh, Ibuki in this case. It will be a pretty interesting thing. That's basically my prediction here for what happens. I haven't read the manga, so uh, I have no clue what's happening here. Uh, so it's definitely going to be very interesting seeing how things go. But obviously moving on to episode 46, uh, we could see that uh, Kai is woken up now and he's going out uh, just to see Aichi. It's cool to see that he has um, the devotion for his friend still, despite the fact that he admits that he no longer has any um, will to actually want to fight. So that's definitely going to be a very interesting thing to see. The effects of being deleted actually 
uh, not working entirely on every single fighter because we even get a glimpse of uh, Kyo actually um, asking Kamui to teach him Vanguard again. So there must be some kind of odd effect happening here. But of course that might just be to protect Kamui since uh, Kyo actually has some sort of PTSD against from the effects of being deleted. So it's very interesting to see uh, the situation with Kyo and Kai. Uh, and of course we also get to see uh, Naoki and um, Shingo actually interacting with uh, Suiko as well who also was a victim of being deleted. And from that we also get to see that you know with Suiko she definitely has no interest anymore. Uh, same thing applies for Tetsu. Just very very odd things happening here. Very crazy things. Uh, Rekka, I mean at this point she is a neutral person. Uh, she can still card fight because she was freed from Psyqualia. Uh, but of course I still have no idea what's happening with the situation of Rekka here because at this point uh, Rekka has the same situation as Corin, and as a result of that I really have no idea what's going to happen here but what's interesting though is that Corin did end up waking up from the fight I guess she had a vision of uh, Aichi and Misaki's fight so you know Aichi is now uh, pretty much the so-called uh, edgy Aichi from the original series uh, when he's now he's back and he has uh, a really creepy demeanor here, so I gotta give credit to the Japanese voice actor for Aichi, really amazing, uh, allowing him to portray this very creepy character, uh, but of course um, I really didn't expect Misaki to win, that was a really predictable fight, um, easily saw that Aichi would beat Misaki, no problem. Uh, but really interesting to see that Corin actually woke up, I mean the way they actually put the whole thing, like Takuto, how he talked about it, it was like Corin was going to lose her memories, but I really didn't expect Corin to wake up at all. Uh, but seeing that she did wake up, I mean, it's kind of the same situation with Rekka. Rekka lost, uh, like Suiko's case was she got deleted, but with Rekka and Corin, they both lost the same way. They were both Sequalia zombies that were just defeated by ordinary fighters. As a result, why is it that Rekka has a different outcome to Corin? You know, so a very surprising to see Corin wake up, but at the same time, the fact that Rekka was doing fine, still helping Ren and Tetsu. Um, after further thinking, Corin waking up is not too surprising. It's just really weird of how Takuda actually worded things here. So I definitely want an explanation of that. Uh, but of course, uh, this is all just going into a very interesting direction because at this point, we have, uh, in terms of major fighters, we have um, uh, Aichi now converted uh, Misaki to Saqualia. We also have uh, Takuto here, who's pretty much just watching everybody doing their thing. Um, we have Ibuki, who's pretty much just contemplating everything. He's now heading to Tatsunagi as well to pretty much just uh, try to delete Takuto or the Concert Master. And now we also have Ren who's um, hopefully he can save things. I mean, he will have to be the character to actually uh, bring Aichi back hopefully. And perhaps with uh, Kai also heading there too, maybe he could also have an influence towards Aichi and bring him back from Psyqualia. So things are definitely starting to heat up for this uh, particular series or particular season, uh, it definitely shows that um, the season is coming to an end here. So I'm predicting that maybe this will end at around episode, I don't know, somewhere like 52 or something like that, uh, this particular season. So it will definitely be really cool to see and find out what happens here. But tell me what you guys actually thought about this. Of course, don't try to spoil it or anything because uh, most people watching this or even including me myself, uh, have not actually read the manga, so we don't actually know what happens. We just want to see different predictions here. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about these two episodes. Definitely very enjoyable. Uh, we'll hopefully be able to watch 47 and 48 as well. But in the meantime, hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time.